So, so she's using the term central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, okay? It's a new movement that calls for the digitization of currency, the end of cash, the end of paper cash. And the call for doing it in the United States is that other countries, principally China, are actually doing it. So the argument goes that China's turning the yuan into a digital currency. Well, if China turns the yuan into a digital currency, then that means that the US dollar, if it needs to keep up, needs to switch to digital status. I have so many problems with this, but I'll try to go through just a few of them, okay, with problems with this argument. First is China's doing it for a reason. It's a social credit system, okay? There's no distinction in China between the amount of money you earn through their non-capitalist system of wealth accumulation and standing up to the Chinese Communist Party. You do the wrong thing in China, say the wrong thing that Xi Jinping doesn't like, it's like you're at an arcade, except the arcade is the bank account, and they deduct some points from your account. That's what they can do with the digital currency. That's why China's doing it. So why on earth would we want to imitate that mechanism unless we actually wanted to do the same thing ourselves in this country? I say, hell no, run the opposite direction. Now, there's a couple of other things going on that are also flawed premises even baked into the argument. Two more, I'll, I'll stick to two more false premises and then we can move on to another question. False premise number one is that this would somehow result in a weaker dollar. Actually, I think if the rest of the world goes to central, centrally banked digital currencies that allowed central governments to reach into your pocket and deduct money from your bank account because they didn't like what you said or what you did, then it might be more valuable to hold a dollar that wasn't vulnerable to the same form of interference. So the idea that this economic theory that we just got to keep up with the Joneses, where the Joneses are really the Jinpings, is, 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 a flawed, is a flawed piece of logic. And then that gets into a whole separate discussion that we could have or maybe save for another day, which is the fetishization of the strong dollar itself, which is actually a, a feature of, of uh, monetary policy in this country that you know, I, I think that uh, creates an artificial demand for the dollar when it's the reserve currency of the world. We're all else equal, I'd still rather it be the reserve currency of the world, but actually systematically disfavors US exporters over importers by making our actually goods more expensive relative that we export rather than the ones we buy for no fault of actually manufacturers in the US, but just a fault of the way that currency markets have recalibrated against the backdrop of an artificially buoyed dollar. And I like a strong dollar that's organically strong, but not one that's artificially buoyed to that status. And so just on so many levels is this, is this argument for centrally banked digital currencies, the central banking digital currencies in the US a bad idea. It's a road to perdition. But the way you know we shouldn't have even taken the first step is that the whole argument was predicated on the fact that China was doing it and we needed to do it to keep up. That should tell you all you need to know. Yeah, we can stop it. I, I don't think it's going to, I mean, I don't, the more, it's back to education as a solution. The more people are educated about this, the more this doesn't have a chance in, 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 under God's green earth to happen in America. And not if I have something to do with it.